alive. <laughs> but what I don't realize is that it catches the last 15 seconds <laughs> of everything I said. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so I'm going to try and get my laptop. You know, this would be a good time for me to have a mouse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how you do that. I always have a mouse. Um, so I'm going to be on... Oh, uh, I'm going to be on OBS because I can see what I'm doing. Hi, Sabine. Hey, how are you wearing there? I don't even have any mine. Do you want me to copy and paste oh it? Okay. I can do it. I said I <laughs> Hi, everybody. All right, I think I got my laptop out of the way. Let me see. Sort of, mostly. Let me just diminish that for the moment till we're till we're ready to roll. It's weird. How's our sound? Doing our sound check. Not you can't see it. Telling me that you're live. Okay, so let me share it. Sorry, I gotta pull the laptop back in. <laughs> and I will go to Facebook. Shouldn't it show up if I'm on your This is not something that I can that I can wrap my brain around at the moment. Hope everybody's doing well today. We're just getting the share on. Well, there it is. A little delay. Just shared it to the Facebook page, and any if in case anybody's um, still going there. So we have our. Our fancy, fancy audio, our fancy cameras, our fancy pants. Hi, Trisha. It's like, it cooled off a little bit. We had storms all day yesterday, but it wasn't like the dramatic, you know, the dramatic front came through and changed everything. <laughs> Basically, it's my property. I don't know about, well, yours is never like too bad, but my property is like a jungle. It's like gorillas in the mist out there. I swear a silverback could come out like from the bamboo any moment. It's all like green and wet and like hanging everywhere. My weeds are flourishing. <laughs> my weeds are flourishing. The poison ivy's flourishing. Oh. Like it's everything, whatever it is that's growing on my fence lines flourishing. So <laughs> um so we're gonna make gnomes today. I don't have my gnome hat. It's too hot for your gnome hat. Yeah. I'm coming up. I feel like I have to get off. Oh. Okay, you're gonna come up over here. Yeah. I do not have a gnome kit. You guys wiped this out. I didn't feel like I could take away from the inventory. <laughs> so I pulled myself pulled for myself um, a pile of a pile of fiber to use. And our gnomes are inspired by um, one of my favorite artists. He's Dutch, and I always know that I'm butchering his name because it's not an easy language to. S What's the the phonics are, are very different, but it, I believe it's Rain Port Fleet. Um, and this is a book I grew up with, loved it my whole life. Absolutely enchanting, I think is the right word. He, he tells us all about real life gnomes, their culture, how they interact with the animals, um, where they, re you know, we got to know where they reside, where they live and can be, well, they can never really be found, but, um, 
how they make their clothes. It's uh, oh, here's a nice little a nice little reference little for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So someone um, was it Patty? Someone was just posted that they were practicing, and she said her arms were too long, but they're not. Short legs, yeah. Yeah, it's the short legs, and they have lovely relationship with nature. So I like to pose my gnomes with the life-size things that we make, like the, the squirrels and the chipmunks and the, and the chicks and the sleepy mice, um, because we are making life-size gnomes. Um, same artist, by the way, I have a dozen or so books by this illustrator. I don't even like to call him illustrator because I really feel like he's an artist. Um, the dog book, brilliant. horses and Noah's Ark which has just been a reference for me forever okay any questions before we get started I've got my wires are um, 18 inches and 22 inches and Today we're just gonna we're just gonna see how far we get. <laughs> Plan on being here next week and continuing on. And uh... <laughs> so we'll just we'll just see where we go. This is my this is my armature so far. Let me put them over. Oh, I can't. I gotta go to OBS to see what the heck I'm doing here. Um, yeah. So we will make this together. I know it's a little hard to see. Very long arms, big hands. But once he's all built out, everything is as it should be. So real gnome um, is about six, six inches tall. But I think that might be with his hat. So maybe we are going a little bit larger than life. Let me leave this here where you guys can see it. I think um, for the armature, I'm going to stay face on and then when we start needle felting I might um, make the overhead visual a little a little bigger so the first wire we want to find the center but instead of pinching it very tight we're going to make a loop um, kind of like a fish and we want that loop to be about one and three quarter inches So let me give you a, it's about three quarters of an inch wide and about one and three quarter inches long. And I'm gonna twist the neck three times. One, two, three. So that should be about a three quarter inch neck twist three twists, three quarters inches. And that should leave you about right now, a little over six inches of, six inches of additional arm wire. Is the this 18? is the 18. Sorry, I need a plug. Oh, I I had back behind you or? <laughs> so we took the 18, we made a one and three quarter inch loop, and then we twisted the neck three times, approximately uh, three quarters of an inch. I'm just checking the, um, nope, first wire is the shorter one. We got 18 inches and 22 inches. We used the 18 inch one. Um, the gnome build is similar to a forest folk, maybe it's just a little bit more complicated because instead of um, kind of the tree trunk, we're doing legs and, you know, body chest and everything like that. So the second wire, we want to find the center. 
I was watching the tutorial and I twisted the shoulders three times, but I'm not gonna do that. It only needs two. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> and it doesn't matter right now which direction you put the wire onto the um, onto the neck because after we do the twists, you can kind of decide which way is front and which way is back. So on each, so I took the the 22 inch, found made the mountain and found the center. And I'm gonna put that onto the base of the neck of the um of the first wire. And on each side, I'm gonna twist a long and short wire together. And I'm gonna be aware that the wires are twisting evenly, so equal pressure. And I'm gonna do two full twists, which means that the long wire has to return to its position two times, which is usually four movements. So in other words, this is pointing away from me right now. And so when I do two movements, it returned to its position. So that was one twist and then the second twist. And then do the other side. One, two. And then you want these to point down because they're gonna become the torso um, and the legs. I think it's good for your arms for the arm wire right now is kind of shooting forward. That's what I'm gonna make his front rather than having it have to come back over this uh, second wire. So now my remaining arm length is about five and a half inches. And my two twists of my shoulders are about inch, inch and a quarter. Galvanized fencing wire be suitable for a life-size person build? Um, galvanized fencing wire for a life-size person? That's No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you cabled, like, galvanized fencing wire is stiffer than aluminum armature wire. Okay. Um, so if you cabled, you know, I don't even know how many eight of them together it still won't stand on its own a okay. life-size person okay unless there's like a rigid structure in it hmm. um yeah two times sorry laura two times then you're gonna bring your uh body wires your second wire together at the waist and i believe this distance is about two inches that triangle from the base of the neck to the uh, to the waist twist, you want it to be about two inches. And there, you also want to do three twists. So in total your body distance might be about three inches from the base of the neck to the, the end of that twist. These are some old school notes right here. <laughs> not even on the, not even on the oh, chart. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't get far enough yesterday to re like redo it. That gives people following along a lot of time to catch up with you. <laughs> so after we have our waist, um, we want to make some hips. So we're going to go out from the waist an inch on each side and make a um, make a bend. Um, I should get a remote for this. I wonder if this camera has a remote. Is that the new one? The new one. The old one came with a remote. Will you just look in that bin over there? That bin. 
Every single time. Yeah, I don't know, Kyla. I threw like everything camera related over there. Every single time I make a gnome, my gnome's right leg wire ends up shorter. Now this one's not that bad. It's only about a quarter of an inch. But um, sometimes it's feeling lucky in Kentucky. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> so funny. It's okay. It's okay. It was an afterthought. I wonder if the original remote works. I don't know. Our new fancy camera has to have its own remote. It does. It will. I'm sure it's somewhere. Um, thank you, everybody, for participating. I don't know if participating is the right word. <laughs> Placing an order for your purchase during the sale was... Um, they're still packing, might still be packing on Monday. We, uh, we had a great time, like, I'm you know, just, oh, oh, let me I see. I don't know if let I Let me am. see. Okay. Oh, well, we got to look at the, the thing. Room. Okay. Okay. You're like, oh, <laughs> shoot. I don't think so. <laughs> Fine. Work. All right. Well, thank you for trying. We'll work on that next time. We're just going to keep improving. Okay, we're going to keep moving on. Their legs are, I believe, three inches long. Why did I not write this down? Shoulder, hip. Legs, three inches. Got it. Check. So from the hip, from the hip, three inches. You know, if you're going to scoot, a little bit one way or the other, scoot a little towards three and a quarter. Like, in other words, if this, so every time you bend your wire, the bend takes up some distance, right? So don't let the bend eat into your legs. Let the bend eat into your foot. <laughs> oh, we got some jokes rolling. Oh, jokes, excellent. Why do gnomes like baseball? Uh, because they can hit a gnome run. Yes. <laughs> Out comes Milo. <laughs> Is everybody here? Is everybody here? It's so hard to see without like a. Everybody here. <laughs> Okay, the foot, it's like, it's not complicated. It's just, it's just one of those things that's verbally hard to explain. Let me do it this way. This is what I'm gonna do, watch this. Cause we're so fancy. Of course I need like a Sharpie and a real piece of paper. Oh, look, this says, no gnome gnotes. Gnome gnotes. <laughs> the foot. Well, can I zoom? This is the question. Oh boy. Every time I think I'm like all set up, there's something Keep learning. that I don't what I'm looking for right now, sorry for the delay, is my camera settings. That's not the right one. Because I would like to um, be able to zoom my overhead camera. And I did not set that up before we started here. I'm gonna be obsessed with the remote that that camera should have come with. Yeah, we're gonna figure that out too. All right, we're gonna move on, too much time. Okay, so the foot, the wire is coming forward. I'm gonna hold this up for you guys to see. And we're, we're gonna pretend like we're looking down on the foot. So you bend the toe around at one inch and then you bend the heel around at a quarter inch. 
Okay. So this is the, this is where the wire's coming down from the leg. This is bird's eye view. This is one inch and that's a quarter inch. So I will do it and show it. And if for some reason your your heel wire isn't quite long enough, you we can um, use a pipe cleaner. But this is what helps people stand up is having this um, this little heel jut in the back, and that's the way our feet work. And actually, making a little arch in your person's feet also helps them stand up. Does not matter whether you go inside or outside with these bends. Inside or outside does not matter. How do gnomes greet each other? Um, they touch noses. They what? Say, what's up, gnome? <laughs> Ooh, so many jokes I don't even have to work. I just have to read them. <laughs> So as I said, my right wire is always shorter, and so my right heel is a little short. So when we do the pipe cleaner, I'm going to extend that a little bit. I should not have worn white today. I should have worn a dark color. Okay, hands. Get your um, get your shoulder angle to be. Um, hopefully you guys are looking at a way bigger screen way closer <laughs> than I am. My, my computer's across the table and my two little screens are real tiny. Um, all, not quite 90 degrees, but not super slopey either. So it's, um, it's coming off the neck at just a slight angle downwards. Okay, on our hands, we need to create, oops, I need my paper again. We need to create the, 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 the arm wire comes down and we want to create the triangle on which we're going to build the fingers. So hopefully, let me know if there's any first timer finger people here. Um, but so if this is our arm wire, we're going to build by bending a triangle. I'm left-handed, so my triangle is going to bend around to the left because that way when I work my fiber and wire on, I can, I can move into this space. If you're right-handed, your triangle is going to bend um, around to the right. You know, I had this like super high because um, I was wet felting. Uh, That's what, yeah, just a little bit. I think it's this one. So, sorry, there's going to be a little wiggle jiggle here. <laughs> Something. <laughs> um, so the arms, we want bef to the, I'm going to call, I'm going to call where the, uh, oh, oh, that just went bad. <laughs> where the triangle meets the, oh, now I, okay, no, that just that. twisted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, it doesn't tighten. It's oh, the, it tighten. yeah. It's it doesn't. It's this thing. It's okay. I just we just have to not touch it. Um, <laughs> where the triangle meets the wire again. That's that's what we're calling the wrist. So, but the the easier way to explain it probably is to make your bend. Arms are, okay, arms are three and three quarter inches to the, all the way to the end of the palm. So that means at about, at about three inches. Okay, let me make this, let me make this bigger now for one second. Thank you. Oh, I just moved it. I'm trying to grab it. Nope. Oh my gosh. Ah, I can't. Okay. So about three, three inches from the shoulder, I'm going to make my 
bend for the palm. And then in half an inch from that, I'm gonna make my bend to make the triangle. You do have first time finger people. First time finger people, oh, oh okay. Okay, hopefully I'll do a good job, but hopefully you also watch some other <laughs> some other videos. Um, because a felt along, okay, so three inches. Like I said, I'm bending both of these. It's not a, it's not symmetrical. It's asymmetrical because I'm bending them both um, to the to the left. So his wrist. This is a, this wire is a little extra long, but his wrist is pretty much at his hip, and his palms hang down a little farther than his hip, and then his fingers are gonna stick off and hang down a little farther than that. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this extra away, and I'm gonna give you some measurements. If I stick my arm out to the side, overall from the shoulder to the end of the palm, I have three and a half. Which is okay, I said three and three quarters, but this one's three and a half. The width of my palm is about half an inch, and the length of the wire that's returning back to the arm is about three quarters of an inch. Um, I might change my mind, but... Yeah. <laughs> we turn the ace put the temperature up yeah. just a little bit. I don't know what Marsha put on it, but I'm getting cold. Yeah, usually I get hot. Okay. So here's our little little guy right now. She cranked it down. Yeah. Do you guys want, can we take a poll real quick? In the past, we've always, you know, we were like, okay, felt along, so we're gonna do from the front. Right. But. Do we this want? This is a harder one. It is a harder I mean, one. I feel like I need to show you guys. Is it okay if I do um, overhead? Overhead. Just make the overhead bigger. Did you do that for the mermaid? I thought you did overhead. Uh, did I? That would that would be good. That was a I, did. One. I don't remember. Let me try bringing my um, stab it in and see if it just gets rid of a little bit of glare. I know. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think this is gonna. I think this is gonna be better. You guys don't need to look at me. Yep. Yep. Overhead. <laughs> okay. Good. Overhead. This okay. is why we do our tutorials that way. Sure. <laughs> the answers are coming in. Okay. Good. On the head, right now, he's got like a flat pancake head. I usually lengthen the neck when I do this step. In other words, I don't open the neck twist up because we're gonna, we're gonna turn the head to the other uh, um, 90 degrees. So I turn in the direction of my neck twist and then just pull on your head a little bit so that it makes like a bean shape. Oh gosh, I really need something that's like dark to hold the hmm the have like a piece of cardboard. Or how about this dark? Is this too small or would this work? Let's try it. Yeah. Because the armature wire just like is yeah, not showing up. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. So you want this bean shape. So now he's facing forward, and the bean shape should be. A little bit of smaller, kind of egg shape. Let's say egg instead of bean. That, that probably makes more sense. A little smaller area is going to be towards his mandible, and the bigger area is pointing back, and that's the back of his head. You do know everyone wants a lady gnome, I think. Yeah, <laughs> lady gnome would be really fun. Very, very fun. And then we got to have babies. I think you posted <laughs> pictures of the lady and the guy yeah, gnome yeah. that people were excited about. Mm -hmm. the potential of a lady gnome here. No pressure, just putting that out there. 
All right, now now's when it gets crazy. It's gonna get crazy. I got. I'm gonna use 32 gauge wires. Um, I know. I feel like when we when we started the kit, it um it maybe had 26 gauge. But Kyla, I I I was prepared. I got them out. I swear. Somewhere. No, those are 26. Oh, there they are. I see them. See them? Yeah. Oh. And the 32 gauge um, is going to make our arms. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so just wa watch me do one. You, I'm going to use the digit widget. You don't have to have the digit widget, um, but it does make it easier. So your hands are both open to the same My direction. My hands are both open to this to the left-handed direction. So just gently down the arm. Now on the right side, I get to the pinky first, and then I do the thumb. On the other side, when I come down the arm, I'm gonna get to the thumb first. Okay, so this is this is fun the way I did this. I made my pinky on the second step of the digit widget. Oh, camera's like, I gotta refocus. And then it's good to go around the wire one time in between, and then scoot your digit widget over, and then you can do the other three fingers on the um, third step of the digit widget. Now I'm coming around towards his thumb. I gotta slide this off. I've been eyeballing the thumbs. I feel like it's easier to hold the digit widget up against the end of the hand and sometimes I'd say put two or three twists in between the fingers and the thumb. And then I'm making the thumb the same length as my other fingers, which is about three quarters of an inch. And then I've got to wrap the wire, pinch the wire together, and then wrap the wire in the same direction as the other wire up the arm. And I will hold this up close in one second. I don't super twist my fingers. I feel like it just, I mean, if you need to tighten something down for some reason, you can, but I just kind of pinch them closed and Why don't gnomes understand most jokes? Hmm. I don't know why. Humor goes right over their heads. It goes right over their head. The humor. The joke. They're short. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is a moment that I'm really <laughs> glad you guys couldn't see my face. <laughs> Because Kyla just really had to spell it out for me. <laughs> well, I'm doing the joke after it's already showed up. But I don't know yeah. if that is a delay or a head. I don't even know where we are in timing. So funny. Uh, which part of the digit widget again? Somewhere this match. The pinky I did on the second step. And the other fingers I did on the third step. Now, this direction, I'm at the thumb first which I want to do about three quarters of an inch from the end of the palm. And I want about a three quarter inch thumb. Our thumbs are really interesting. I'm going to tell you some about thumbs in one second. Then I come to the end of the palm. And now I need to flip my digit widget over because I need to do the third step first. And I am going around the wire in between each finger which you don't have to do. It, it just um, defines where like the finger is a little bit better. And then I'm gonna go around the second step for the pinky. And then I'm going around the remaining wire, closing the loop and wrapping the rest of my wire up. You know, I'm gonna break 
my norm and not do the fingers first okay. because I want, you know, fingers are tedious. I just kind of want us to get into the project. Plus they do get a um, little worked over, you know, as you're doing everything else. Webcam definitely struggles a little with focusing. Yeah. Well, I just ordered the second cable that we need oh. to have our overhead cam also be Ooh. a high quality okay. <laughs> camera. Um, it's not, not terrible, you just see it. Yeah. Not sure what to focus on. Yeah. Yeah, especially when I'm moving around in there. All right, pipe cleaner time. You know, I took that wire right down the arms, so we don't even need one on the arms, but we need one on each leg, and they're long enough to shoot up onto the body as well. So, wait a minute, let me think about what way I wrap. So the pipe cleaner does the same thing. I gotta steal a little bit more pipe cleaner. Come on. Okay. So I've got about three inches sticking up from the waist. I'm coming down a leg. When I get, I wanna get very, very close to the foot before I leave the leg, come out over the toe, just fold it back. And then this is where I had to make my heel a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger with the pipe cleaner and just fold it back the other way. But you want a nice like quarter inch, quarter inch heel back there. And then the rest of this, I can twist onto the torso a bit. I, I, with my wire, I try to go, always try to go the direction that I'm going to wrap my wool. So everything just settles into each other without bumps. Oh, they're so cute. I can just picture their little boots. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've done one. It has been a while. Yeah. You should make one. Do you want to make one? Can you work and check? I don't know. I have extra. Um, if you're if you use tacky wrap, would you still use pipe cleaner? Um, you could just use tacky wrap. You have a whole armature ready. Mm-hmm. I'll make one if you have an armature ready. Mm -hmm. I'm not making an armature. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to like. <laughs> Um, there, you can use that other felting surface. Okay. Or... Um, we got all our wool here right between us. Oh, this is exciting. We need a, we need a camera on Kyla. <laughs> all right, on the head, you can either tacky wrap it or I would like to get, I'd like to get some pipe cleaner on here. So I'm going to go around the neck. And then this is where I always get kind of like confused about how I do this, but this time we'll go, we'll just loop through the face wire a little bit. Man, I have to use your armature. It's gonna be wrapped all backwards. It is. <laughs> That's funny. I'm just joking, cause I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure anyone out there is like, I would like Sarah's armature, please. You don't have to come down the arm. I just didn't feel like finding my scissors. <laughs> so he's just got pipe cleaner on his head. Dude, it looks just like the reference skeleton. Maybe I'll just use this. It's okay, I'm checking the comments. 
<laughs> yes, we shipped Canada. Hey, Kyla. What job did the gnome apply for at the Greasy Spoon Diner? Uh, think about the last joke that I didn't get. Head chef? Head. <laughs> <laughs> over your head. Short order cook. Short order cook. <laughs> oh. Poor gnomes. Oh, can Marsha make me a latte too? This wasn't even. This wasn't even the the frother. This was just oh. the the cream in there. <laughs> It is good. I needed it. How's everybody doing? Is our do we do we have an armature? Do you need me to repeat anything? I'll repeat anything except for the fingers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll re I'll repeat anything needed. Let me get my phone off the grid here. Got my notes. Talbot had a word for this. When you um when you stage an overhead uh lay things out. Was uh, it was it a D word? From that website? Yeah, we were talking about it. Uh, my um as you know, we changed a lot of colors and so my I'm gonna divvy this up for us, Kyla, but we might need more. Um my wool colors and what will be, I'm not sure how many known packs were packed, you know, previous to the change and how many were packed after, but um, we have oats, maybe for the pants, I really like oats, but the other option is wheat, which is, a little, um, this is caramel actually, which is a little more gold, like the gold that we used in the, um, in the gnome kits before. And then we have, um, still have Christmas red, which is a little brighter, which is awesome because they're, they are nice and bright. And I have, uh, I believe this is Lapis for his, um, for his shirt. And then I still have the peacock for his tunic as Did well. Did you cut a head pipe cleaner? Um, I was lazy and didn't want to grab my scissors, so I went down the arm, but you could totally cut it. Uh, foot leg wrap, you just started the hip? And go down. I started with about three inches of my pipe cleaner sticking up. I went around the waist and then I went down and that remaining pipe cleaner, I went on the rib cage there. So the two rib cages and feet are each, each a pipe cleaner. Is that stuff in your way? I don't want to mess it up. Oh my gosh, it's been 45 minutes and we only made the armature. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. We'll see how far we get today. I might direct them to the gnome video for a like a part of it, you know, and then we can do the face and close um, next week. Okay, um, it's time to put some wool on, and we're gonna use. Um, I'm using gray gray core, the, this is the light gray, but anything that's um, kind of mid-range is good because we're gonna use um, blue and um, like a heathered color and gray on the boots. So this gives us a, a good basis. All right, let's work with about six inch piece split in half lengthwise. And let's start on the legs because that's nice and simple. I'm gonna anchor it around the waist. You don't wrap the arms because they have wire on them. Oh, you have the wire on one arm but not the other. I had I had wire on both arms, but like I said- One has pipe cleaner, one doesn't, no big deal. No big deal. This was me just not feeling like cutting my pipe yeah. cleaner. Okay. 
So wrap your six inches down your leg, nice and tight. I'm not gonna worry about the foot right now. I'm just gonna go, well, I gotta turn the corner, but I'm running out of wool. So you can either stop at the ankle or I turned the corner and just went around the, the foot a little bit. Now, while we're looking, I'm gonna see if I can find my camera settings here again. <laughs> Do gnomes ever wear other colors, or are the gnomes in other colors technically elves? Not a joke, legit question. Um, gnomes can wear other colors. Um, Male gnomes are pretty typically red. Yeah, the the Arctic gnomes wear white. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry for my. I'm just leaning in because I was trying to. find my the correct settings um, so I could zoom and zoom in and zoom out and all that all that stuff uh oh no <laughs> uh oh <laughs> I just did something and the color went wacky uh Did you guys see that? It just went like preferences. John's asking, are fabric materials hard to get through customs? Probably depends on which customs. Generally not. I don't think so. I think we hear. There's always um, a question about wool in New Zealand, but it seems to get in fine. All right, well, we're going to see how this goes. If I need Talbot, I'll just call him. Basically, I wanted to find the zoom and then whatever I did reset some some settings. Yes, the colors bluer, cooler. Yeah, but I think it's okay. All right, and then we're going to take the other piece and do the other leg. The gnome book, um, at the end of the gnome book, it does talk about the other gnomes and elves and goblins and um, trolls. Gnomes um, and trolls do not get along. Well, I think trolls are nasty, right? Yeah, why did the earth make trolls? I just wondered that about ticks this morning. Yeah, like why? Come on now. I guess we we think of trolls as more humanized, so I don't know. I'm not terribly successful on the feet. Just draft your like draft your fiber out and that way you can sort of end it. <laughs> um I did not watch the entire gnome tutorial, so I might deviate quite a bit uh, from what I did, <laughs> from how I did it in the gnome tutorial. But I have made many, many, many gnomes, so I'm trusting myself at the moment. That just shows that there are many ways, as far as like which steps you take. Always have good and bad for balance. That's a, that's like a proverb thought. It's true. Jane. It is true. It's the yin and yang of life. Have you ever made a leprechaun? No, no. I, I don't want to offend anybody, but leprechauns freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> and I will probably never make a clown. Well, John is part Irish, so you might have offended him. Yeah. I apologize. And I'm sure people love clowns, but they freak me the heck out, so. Right, every setting is too Not really people can. clowns, clown dolls. Because I watched Poltergeist as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so as I said, I you might watch be- watch that leprechaun scary movie, that's why. We're going to use um, our blue core 
And this time let's do more like a four inch piece. Arms are a little short. And same thing, just start at the top of the shoulder and wrap down towards the wrist. Getting a nice tight, this doesn't have to be super skinny, so you don't have to, um, you know, go too crazy with the drafting and the pulling, but you do want to end before the wrist because that's going to be flesh toned. So yeah, I don't remember blue arms on the nose. I know I probably did off white chunky core or gray right. or something. Gray probably would have been better for a first wrap. But this is what makes felt alongs different. Ooh, a Viking. Ooh, a Viking. Now that, that I could get into. Yeah. Yes, with fur and leather and all kinds of stuff. This is... Braids. Lapis for arms, right? What color is this? This is lapis, I think. Whatever's in your New kit. Core. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You did off white in the tutorial, someone said. I did off white arms? Yeah. I Interesting. Think. Make sure your feet and head and thumbs are all oriented in the proper human, proper anatomical positions. <laughs> Yeah, so if I use blue core, are people gonna run out because I'm using blue core? Oh, instead of gray, instead of gray. I thought I did gray, but I thought the mo most of the um, gnome kit was made with gray. Yes, wait on your blue if that's yeah. the kit. Let's take um, another piece of gray, six inches, and split it in half lengthwise. And we're gonna wrap the waist and chest. So I usually take the, this is kind of a fun wrap. I usually stick the arms out. And then your chest is like a, a square, like a four faceted square. So if you go around the waist once, then you're gonna kind of hit one side of it and go over a shoulder and then come around and then hit the other side and then go over the shoulder. We'll do that with two pieces. I'm gonna turn them around and go the other, other way so that I get a little bit of a different effect here. So you kind of give him a crisscross like he's putting on a bandolero. Okay, good. We'll, we'll use gray a little longer. I don't want anybody to run out of there. Even though we have piles <laughs> piles here, the kit, would, kit wouldn't. Right. I did not find us Angora, but I know I have some. That probably won't be until next week anyway. The goldfish wrap. This is a wrap. Yes, it is. Many times. That's true. Oh, he's break dancing. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a little groove on. He's got a little groove on. Now, since I like to build things. Uh, kind of at the same time, I want to get some wool on the head because I don't like getting all this built up and then just having no, um, nothing on the head. And for that, I'm going to use Gnome Nude. 
appropriately. The new gnome nude. The new gnome nude is based on fair, so they are very, very similar. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful color. It's not quite as the old gnome nude was a little more peachy, like a little yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, let's do a six inch strip split in half. And then this is also, this is also a little bit like the goldfish wrap. I go around the neck a couple of times and then you, it's almost like winding, um, a ball of yarn. You kind of just have to keep changing, changing the angle. You know what I mean? Like, um, to get around the the head. It's not as distinct as the goldfish or the chest. You also use gray on the boots, but should have used oatmeal. <laughs> Apparently we were a hot mess <laughs> on the gnome video. It was quite a while ago. I mean, I like to think that we get a little bit more precise and prepared and better as we go. Felt alongs <laughs> being the exception. <laughs> Throwing a felt along in between two days of sale, and then I have oh, a horse yeah. class, oh. and then a dragon class early week. Nuts. Keep switching gears. What is the smallest scale you have ever worked with? I don't. I'm not like a. I don't get a thrill out of the Teeny out of the thing. miniature. So, you know, in terms of scale. couldn't say really most of my stuff is like one sixth scale it was three years ago we did the gnomes oh okay it wasn't that long <laughs> i have no excuse then yeah. all right we're gonna do that again with the second piece this time you can go around the neck to get going but pretty quickly switch up to the head um and wrap that The smoother and tighter you can keep your ribbon, um, the better result and the less you have to felt. He's still very pancake heady at the moment. These. What's that? Laura said the bees. Is that the smallest scale you've worked? Bees well, no. Small. Well, well the bees are life-sized. They're bigger than life-sized. Yeah. I guess if you're talking about te technically or literally talking about scale, that's a one, you know, one to one is like yeah. is life size. So smaller, like needle, like a dollhouse scale is one to twelve. So it's twelfth, one twelfth mm -hmm. life size. Um, which is very, very small. Yeah. Like if people want to needle felt a cat for, for a dollhouse, it's going to be an inch big. Okay. That's, t that's like tiny. Tiny, tiny. Yeah. Toothpick sleepy mice. Toothpick. Yeah. You make wrapping look so easy. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of practice. Excellent. Kyla's making it look easy over there too. Let's hit the legs one more time. This time let's do more like an eight inch piece and then we'll, we'll be able to get that foot a little bit more, but still go from the hip all the way down, get another layer on there. Gray. I'm using gray. I probably could switch, but we'll just use gray. The gnome kit. Now maybe you guys who have the kit can, can conf confirm this. Um, the biggest chunk of wool, I believe, was gray. It used to be gray chunky core, but now it's just gray. Like gray. All right, I'm going down to the foot. Getting the foot. It's a little tricky to wrap the foot and the heel. I don't have like a super way to explain it. Just you, when you get back there, you have to kind of 
make it work and maybe have to stab a little bit. I don't have a way to say, you know, go here, then go there. All, the, all I can say is make it happen. Oh, they're like cute already. I'm so excited. Bill trying to teach me how to dive. He's like, just watch. <laughs> I mean, I do dive. I go in head first, but the, like the waist down does its own thing. I got so Max and Evan pretty good me. in the pool yeah. this, a week or two ago. Good. Yeah. Well, the bottom half of my body kind of folds and it's not pretty. So he's like, I'll teach you. Just watch. I'm like, I have watched people die. No, he needs to use life. like like more words, like more like ideas, you know, like think of this or That's so funny. <laughs> just, watch. <laughs> this just, just watch. Just do what I do. Exactly. Mm. Well, that's me right now. Both legs. Yep. Do do do. You use the hot wrap on the front and back of the ankle. Laura said. Yes, although initially you can't even it's do kinda, that. Yes, I do remember that. And it's nice to build up that um that instep, the hot wrap when you do your next layer. All right, we're not going to be able to avoid the hands much longer. <laughs> we'll do, maybe we'll kind of like focus on fingers for a minute. That'll make it better. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check in. Let I'm me see what's happening. Wool on the back. I really just... apologize for my like big face in here every once in a while. You're not getting no, wool. Just denying oh, the fact that they need wool. Yes, it's uh. They don't need wool. <laughs> well, we do make a shape that puts some fiber there, so you might you might actually be onto something there. Avoidance and denial. Uh, we got a question about a loom. Seen a woman work with sheep hair. Can you loom your dog hair and make something? Don't know. Um, I, I am working on a dragon. I'm working on a dragon for my course, my current course. Yeah, there are people who love fingers and toes. Laura, I know, like Laura. I knew you were a freak, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Debbie, Debbie. Debbie Diener likes it. <laughs> Wait, what did what did Patty say? What did I miss? I missed something. Patty said something funny. Patty, oh. You know, we really can just use Gnome Nude for this entire project. I, I grabbed fair, but I don't, I don't know if we need it. I don't even know if we use it in the, is there fair in your kits? I had the list. How tall is this guy going to be when finished? Well, with his hat, he's going to be like nine inches easy. He's already, no, he's already like nine inches. So he'll be a good 12. I feel like he's a little big for some reason. But maybe this is the size I've always made them. But I feel like it's been a long time. Yeah. All right, finger time. Gnome nude's great. It's nice and consistent. Um, and I would take a about a three inch piece. And I'm not gonna tell you how many times to split it, but you're just gonna make um, little little strips, very very little strips. So when I do a finger, let me super zoom. Maya, 
No fair in the kit. Okay, good. We just used no noon. That's good. When I do a finger, I start around the hand, and then I pick which finger. I kind of single it out. So for some reason, I'm going to start with the middle finger. I don't know why. And then I take my tiny strip around and around, a little um, tacky wrap, or Swax, if you have it, um, works great. Let's see, I think I have that little tacky wrap. I did not heat up, I did not heat up Swax today. The key to the ends, and they still might come a tiny bit loose. There's more tacky wraps in a container behind me somewhere. Is, you know, in the direction that you're wrapping, you're gonna have an angle down. When you get to the end, you have to angle back in your in your thought. You can't you can't wrap around the end straight at a 90 degrees to the wire because it wants to slip off. So you have to angle back. Now the 32 gauge is a little wiggly. It's a little more wiggly than the uh, than the 26. Now we're gonna try something else here today. Not sure how it's gonna work with the whole armature here. I like to have enough to come all the way around the palm again, just real thin, um, because if your, if your wool starts here and ends here, then it's less likely to pull off because everything's anchored here. If it starts on the finger and ends somewhere on the finger, it could just undo and slide off. So another technique, which I saw recently, would be to take the same, approximately the same amount of wool. I'm gonna restack it. I'm gonna tacky wrap my finger. Now this involves, I'm absolutely have no idea if this is gonna work or not, so don't. It works when you can hold the wire. I don't know if it works when you um, have the whole armature in your hand. Now this involves putting the fluff onto the finger and spinning, um, spinning the entire thing. Make your gnome dizzy. Yeah, make your gnome dizzy. It's a little, and you just have to have the right, sorry, I have to kind of not worry about what you guys are seeing for a second. <laughs> um, you have to have the right amount of pressure and it starts to just lock down. Um, let me show you on a non, um, a non armature. And I've, I've, I think we talked about this in the mermaids. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I really like it. I just feel like I, I haven't practiced it. I haven't found the, the key to the technique that works with the way that I work. Um, and I saw this on the Needle Felting UK group. Um, a woman had shared her, shared her technique. So when you're making something teeny tiny, it, it really is, it really is nice. So the fluff just goes on and then I gotta cut this because it's gonna poke me in the face. And then you use the wire kind of like a crank. Now this is going way tighter faster because, because I was able to just turn it, you know, very easily oh, wow. with the right amount of pressure. But look, it just makes the nicest little, Ooh. um, a nicest little digit. So if you wanted to experiment with individual fingers and then putting them, putting on. them on, I I always feel like my wrist ends up bulky when I do that. Um, okay. And I feel there's a slight risk to it pulling out, you know, whereas when the fingers are part of incorporated into the armature. It has a slightly fuzzier look, 
Um, so if you guys want to comment, like if you're trying it and you like it, I would be curious to know. Trisha said she's going to hurl. It's making me dizzy. I'm sorry. Don't look. Just don't watch. Definitely the finger was a little chunkier this way. I'm a fan of Swax. Yeah, Swax is great. All right, I'm going back to the wrap. better at the wrap. Okay, so thumbs. Okay, thumbs are interesting. We think that they're short, um, but the digit goes all the way back here. Um, and this wrap, there's a wrap that makes this web here, which is, um, distinguishes us from other primates. We can only go 90 degrees and they can take their thumb and go way, way, way back, which is part of the aquatic evolution theory. And then, and then it also makes this pump thumb palm. Uh, but let me grab a, we got to name our skeleton. I was going to grab a skeleton, but I don't think I can make it do what I need to do for the camera. So I'm going to wrap my fingers at like my regular pace now and then wherever we are with it we're gonna you know at that point we're gonna move on if you need to go back to your fingers you can yeah you got to be careful about how much wool returns to the palm because it can get very fat can get out of control my my wrap around my palm is like super thin Can you leave your tacky wrap on your work table without putting it into an airtight bag? Or yes. It dry out? It no. Can sit out. It can just sit out. It will always reward you with tackiness. Even if you don't. <laughs> it will. Do you, the only reason you might want to is because. It, stick. Yeah, stuff. Stuff will stick to it. is tacky wrap. Where do you get it? Well, we make it. And you can get it on our website and it is a wax product that has stickiness. It's going to grab your grab your wool on the wire, right? It's wax. Yeah. It's sticky. It's sticky. Okay. It stays sticky, so you don't use it on top of the wool. The swax you can use on top of the wool. It dries smooth. My first finger I made so thin uh, that it's wacky. So now I have to put, yeah, so now I have to try and put more wool. I have to wrap it again. I did it too well. I did it too thin. 
I only have one hand done. I only have one hand done. I do not know what happened here. I've got two super long fingers. Yeah, I have some length on a couple. <laughs> My all wet. And and we did five fingers. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of fingers. I think sometimes they cheat and do do four. Wow, his hands look pretty big. Let me see. Let me see what's going on over there. Gigantic. Gigantor hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but un unwrap, they're so big. Yeah. My thumb's whack. It needs another. Yeah. Your thumb this thumb's maybe up a little high. Okay. This one's in good in a good position. I mean I didn't make the armature, so. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I'm joking. I'm, I'm sure just you would have noticed that it should be down a little. I just wrapped it. Like, I think it's good. Like not even paying attention. I think it's I think it's good. I just wrapped it. The hands always look big until you put on like clothes. Right. Everything that's weird about it, I'll blame on the armature. Yes. Surely it's not my felting. <laughs> Gnomes are burly fingers, yes. Well, mine does. Mm. All right, we'll do my other fingers and then we're gonna keep going. Do we but, ever, sorry, do we ever okay. use cotton pipe cleaners, someone's asking. Um, I guess ours are probably, or polyester, maybe, probably. I would guess well, synthetic. Kyla, the hand on the thumb on my left gnome hand on this one is too distant as well. So it must be something that I do weird when I make my armature. It's your signature. Yeah. Gnomes wear mittens when my hands get funny. Mittens are a good Oh yeah, that's your that's your northern gnome. Then they Yeah, they're or it's winter time. <laughs> Nobody needs to know why it's winter. I made one gnome. My sister has it. I loved it. It was all natural. The Arctic. Yeah, whites. the same size as gnomes. I feel like fairies can be a variety of sizes. Kind of like dragons. But I kind of picture them smaller, fairies? mostly. Maybe sprites are more, a little bigger. Jenny would know. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a, a fairy and sprite illustrated book that would be fun to have. Mm -hmm. I can kind of picture it, um, but I don't know the the title of it. Someone said their gnome kit has the peach color for the skin. It will be more sun tanned. Yeah, it changed a little bit. But I made a lot of gnomes with that color and I, I like it too. And they are kind of tan, they are kind mm -hmm. of like they spend all their time outside, pretty much. Plus they drink, so they <laughs> they have red noses and cheeks. Fairies are about the same, just slighter in the in the brain. Mm. They're very thin, light. Yeah. And you have fly. 
What about a fly? When you have to fly. Oh, when you have to fly, yeah. I think the 42 gauge and the, um, if you want to get a little detail oriented, the 42 gauge and the grab and stab uh, would be great for really um, kind of nailing down the ends of your fingers and getting them securely felted. I usually wrap and move on, but I, I probably should spend a little bit of time making sure that what I wrapped is well, well secured. All right, after this finger, I'm gonna ask you to watch the hand wrap. Um, wherever you are, kind of stop and watch, and then we will, uh, We'll move on. That means she's not going to tell you again. <laughs> so don't ask. Yeah, hey, right? Thank you for interpreting. Because you'll embarrass yourself. <laughs> I have Yasmin's voice in my head. Hey. Is it, have you seen Yasmin or Yuki? She's on. I feel like Yasmin and Yuki should know each other. Oh, okay. I have not seen Yuki on. So, but... Yasmin, um, I would like for you to meet Yuki from Japan. If you see her or feel like you guys are twin souls. <clears throat> kind of like the way... Lee and I picked each other out from the entire world of the internet. <laughs> All right, I don't know what's happening here. I got a hand that I feel like is upside down. <laughs> All right, wherever you are, I'm gonna give you a few seconds to nail down whatever you need to, and then I want to show you um, show you the hand and okay. All right, so this is my gnome's right hand with the big finger that I did in the. <laughs> in a different way and then the middle finger that I had to put more wool on. Um, I need a nice sort of four inch strip, but I don't need much of it. So I'm gonna split it in half and then I'm gonna split it into quarters. And then I want to start on the wrist, so like where my blue ends. And it's okay to go up onto the blue because the arm is going to get that sleeve that's going to hang over this fleshy part. And then I'm going to go in between the thumb and the fingers and around the whole palm a few wraps. And that pulls everything together. And then I want to go around the base of the thumb to give it a little kind of fatness to the base of the thumb. And then whatever's left, I'm going to turn back around and go around the whole palm. And I somewhat overlap the knuckles and that kind of helps if you have any spaces in between your wires of your fingers. Um, helps that. So it was the wrist, the palm, turn the corner and go around the thumb palm, and then stab the whole thing pretty. I've really been using the reverse needles a lot. 
So if you ever have like a wrapping look or line that you mm -hmm. want to eliminate, the reverse needle will sort of mess it up and then you re-stab it in more smooth. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit of color pollution from my stab it here. So I do the other hand a little bit differently just because I'm, you know, wrapping in the same direction because, but I'm on the other side. So get, make sure that wrist is good. I might do the thumb next. And then come back to the palm. Just very smooth, drafted out really thin so that you're not not adding, that's why that piece needed to be a quarter, so that you're not adding a ton of bulk and fiber. It's more just the, the smoothness of it. How's everybody doing? Yeah, getting rid of your wrapping lines is a really nice refined step to do. So some people, after they've done a foot or a hand detail, will wrap it in um, saran wrap just mm -hmm. to protect it while you do the rest of your project. Have you been doing that more lately? or? Mm -mm. What did we do it on? Oh, the dragons. All right, I'm going to give you guys a minute um, to tighten up whatever you're working on, but we're going to keep going, um, and then you can come back to your fingers, come back to your fingers later. Oh, you've got both of yours done. And then maybe before next week... <laughs> Next week I can watch the video and see, remember all the things I referenced. How do you get such delicate fingers? I got gnarled, stubby fingers and I tried so hard to get it on the I got mitts. Mine are pretty stubby. It's the amount of wool, the, um, you know, the tightness and the, it's practice. It's just practice. That's all I can. It helps to, you know, get the, the thickness of the wool correct. Um, Do you remember what I told you about all the little details? Yeah, I do. Like, She's the voice in my head. I'm working on a forest person with all the leaves and imitating the bark. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She is the voice in your head. She is. Don't be afraid of the details. Every time I think I'm just going to move on. I think, no, Sarah, get that right. Okay, we're moving on. So I suggest if you want to like do what 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 we're doing together, um, you stop your fingers wherever you are and we'll keep going. Um, I'd like to I'm 
let's I'd like to get another wrap on the arms um, because I want to make the chest pillow so I want to get the arms just a little bit a little bit thicker so I'm gonna work with four inches I'm gonna split it in half and what I'd like to do this time is start like with my fuzz on the chest come down the arm like sort of to where the elbow would be and then turn around and go up and return to the other side you'll see when you wrap you know um what works but you're going to start on the chest or the back depending on which way you're holding your gnome wrap down to the elbow turn around and come up So it helps to draft. I always kind of dra like smooth out my um, my piece a little bit. So on this side, I'm starting on his back because I wrap in this direction, going down the arm to the elbow, turn around, and return to the chest. John's asking once you finish a project so nothing will be frayed and come undone, can you spray it like with hairspray? It should um, be. It should be good as it is. You know, I, I used to think about stuff like that and what the the hairspray might just add like a kind of a tacky, sticky layer that would attract, um, more. attract more dust. Um, so, you know, if it's well felted and we have things that have been around here for years and they're just fine. I mean, if a three-year-old's playing with them, <laughs> that's a different ballgame. No amount of hairspray is no. going to. <laughs> did you, did you um, hear the uh, arm instruction? No, I saw that's okay. Well, let me get you a slip. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're going to start on the chest okay. or back, go down towards the elbow, and then return to the, like the thigh or whatever. Yes, exactly. Um, Tanya, we're using our new core wool. Um, it, it, it's woolen milled, so it, it is stretchy. It has a lot of loft to it, and the fibers are all crisscrossed, which means there's a lot of air in there. Um, that's a good way to describe it. It's very bouncy, whereas a combed top, um, or maybe even I can demonstrate with this merino, um, It doesn't 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 have any any bounce. Like you pull on it and it's just doink 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 like stiff. So alrighty, let's do a um let's do a chest wrap in blue so that we have the blue all over. I want to hit the waist and do the chest and then we're going to put the um well we're going to do a little more to the legs and then we're going to put the chest pillow on so i've got half of about an eight inch strip and i'm going to get the waist blue for now and then do that crisscross here i might use both of these actually 
both halves of my eight inch strip. Well, maybe not, because we're gonna do the pillow and then we wrap that so it'll all turn blue. So you can see why you would like to have a core color that kind of matches your top coat. Um, because, if you guys can see, so even just stabbing that little bit, the the gray like peeked out through. Um, so that's what happens. So that's why we match our match our core colors. Hey Talbot, can I ask you a favor? <laughs> it's a settings favor. When I opened um, this settings panel. I think you're gonna have to come around here. Remember how we got the um, we got the color better? Mm -hmm. It like went back to the reddish color, and I couldn't remember what we. I disabled the auto that refocus thing. Okay, good. Um, I think it was. I couldn't remember what we did here. Is it the white balance? Yeah, that's. That should be auto? No, not auto, oh. but you can adjust the slider. Okay. So you want to unclick auto. Okay. That's a little better. I don't know, it's still red. Yeah. Yeah, it gets too orange. Sorry, everybody. That's a little better. Thank you. That's all you. <laughs> How's it going down there? Good. All right, let's turn our attention to the legs for a minute. Let's do another gray wrap, and then we're gonna switch to the um, to whichever leg color you want to use. Um, so pull um, about an eight inch piece and split it in half lengthwise. And we're gonna do something similar that we did to the arms. We're gonna start on the hip, go down to the knee and return to the hip. So just kind of building up his thigh muscle a little bit. So you go down to the knee? Yeah. So we're getting like a second layer of thickness on the upper leg. When you start a wrap, your tight wrap in one place is what anchors that um, that initial fuzzy end. I don't like stabbing things in their privates. <laughs> <laughs> Feels wrong. Mm -hmm. So distracted by my gigantor hands. <laughs> that mine look gigantor at the moment too. <laughs> He's a good swimmer. <laughs> so funny how one side is just easier to wrap. Yes. Yes. Oh, Laura, I'll tell Tabit you said hi. <laughs> He's gone like a flash. I think I'm going to use um, oats. But your kit might have a color that looks more like gold or willow. It was our willow. Um, 
But I think I'm going to go with the more natural kind of tweedy, tweedy oats. And I'm going to start with a about a six inch piece split in half. And we're going to do a little butt wrap here. So I've got them turned over. This one's a little browner if you want more of a warmth to it. And I'm just, let me just try something real quick because I'm trying to remember how I did this. Yeah, you just crisscross in between um, over the hip, between the legs and over the hip, back and forth. Just start like just start. Yep. Okay. Just start on right on those one inch hips. Okay. Yep. I know it's a little weird, isn't it? You feel like you need to switch switch hands. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it again. I feel like he could use a little more bulk. If yours seems a lot bigger than this, you might not need the second piece. But this time I'm gonna do it from the front, just in case there's any um kind of difference in how I pull or what I do. I what this does is it kind of builds a builds a pelvis um, and eliminates the look of you know the leg wires being bent like that because it puts wool in the middle and up here, so it gives them more of a pelvic area. See if there's any jokes about that. <laughs> Do not Google gnome pelvis jokes. <laughs> it's always always good advice. Don't. <laughs> Don't Google any pelvis joke with, <laughs> with a word in front of it. <laughs> Alright, this is where I might stray a little bit because I didn't didn't um, do my homework and um, remember all the shapes. Okay. If you're ready, I have the full width of about an eight inch piece of um, blue core. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna fold two inch folds. And I'm just trying to decide this where I'm gonna put this. I think I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put it vertically. I don't feel like he's fat enough. Do we have more of that? Can I have some of that? Mm -hmm. This, this, you're gonna make this dude as fat as you want him to be. So I want him to be fatter, so I'm taking more and wrapping my folded piece. Now what I'm looking for here, so I have this big pillow, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where you can determine how fat you want him to be. I want one fuzzy edge of the pillow to taper up onto the chest, mm -hmm. but I want the bottom edge of the pillow to be kind of tucked into a big belly. Okay. And you totally leave this skinny waist because he gets a tunic. And I like to leave the skinny waist because if we were to totally bulk this out in belly, he wouldn't be able to bend. Mm -hmm. Plus he gets pant bellies. <laughs> he gets a pant belly and a butt. Pants butt. So, pants butt. yeah. So, I'm letting the top of my pillow kind of taper onto his chest where his collarbones would be up towards his chest and shoulder. We do not get super detailed figure oriented on these, uh, on these little guys. 
And then, then the bottom of my pillow, I'm kind of tacking up into the belly poof that I prefer. <laughs> Sabine is saying that we'd use all the glue from her kit. Um, Sabine, I think we're at the point where you would switch to the peacock. If you have some gray left and you want to start your pillow in gray and then switch to blue. She said she has more blue, I'm like separate from the kid. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, yeah, I should have, um, knowing that so many people have kits. But I think we're still, I think we're on track, yeah. My belly, oh, that's nice. He's got a chest. Like yeah, so mine's a, mine's a little more. So Kylo's is more rounded up here, and mine is kind of at a slope, and then then really rounded at the bottom. All right, I need a little better. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that looks good. So I, um, I think this is the way I would do it, and hopefully this is the way I did it on the tutorial, would be to take, um, an eight or nine inch strip of peacock, and just do a wrap, mostly towards the top, because he gets this whole tunic at the bottom. So I'm gonna come over the shoulder. Under the arm, around the back, under the arm, and then over the shoulder. And that starts to put the peacock um, onto the top of the figure and then the peacock sleeves will meet this and the peacock um, tunic will meet it. So in this wrap, you wanna have a nice ribbon-like wrap that's really just changing the color versus um you know bulking up any any fiber a little so i think we'll do a little bit more to the pants and then maybe save the head for when we're fresh next time So how's yours? It's just like hitting the top of the belly yeah. and it's, I know it's hard to see the difference, but hitting the top of the belly and then over each shoulder. If you need to use a, lay a little more fiber on there or you didn't get it in one wrap, um, that's totally fine. Like you could take some, you could take some and just go over each, over each side even. He does get completely bearded, which Hides many, many things. Audrey, this is the peacock top. I just put two like half inch strips over each over each shoulder to really Belly's getting smooshed. So on the pants, um, like pre-felt would be fun to get all the little wrinkles and everything. Um, really like on the gnomes, with all the wet felting that we're doing, wet felting the hat, pants, and tunic could be like a whole next level kind of thing, nice you know? Blue. Yeah. Lee does a lot of that. 
wet felting her little clothes. All righty. You good? Another minute? Trying to read comments and <laughs> I know I, I can take a break and look too. John oh. is new and has big visions. <laughs> Good. He's saying you mentioned in mermaid videos about possibly working body parts like hands separate. When making large scale, would that be better? Separate built hands. And See, on the, the larger scale I go, the more I would incorporate them because you have the room to work. And I like I like my armatures to be sturdy and um, poseable and integrated and. If I if I make a head or hand separate, I mean, if it's just something that's just going to absolutely just sit there, mm -hmm. that's one thing. But if it's anything that's gonna get handled or posed, or I like that, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to attach separate parts to make them, you know, un unified enough. In the mermaid, I was playing around with that. Um, twisted finger idea and I kept the hand e even though the hand was separate it was still all on one wire so that those wires could be twisted onto the mm -hmm. um. but yeah there's there's endless um, endless possibilities so on the pants I like to kind of make little sort of bunchy knees um you could even make, um, for example, on the on the face ace or a pindle, you could even make a little kneecap, which I don't think we did this in the tutorial, but you could make a pillow that you put, um, that's a little big, horizontally um, across the knee. Let me just go a little smaller. That was huge. I the face ace will be my friend on this one. Okay. A little less wool. I've got a two inch strip here. But basically, you can even roll this in your hand and you can make a little kneecap. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <sighs> All right. What did we say? Oh. Wonder what happened. Any comments yet? No, I'm watching. I see no signal. It just flipped. Weird. Put your back on. Hang on. Someone said, uh oh. Trisha. I know. That was a big uh oh. There, there, you're back. <laughs> I don't know what, I have no idea what happened. Oh, uh, it's over there. Over. It's over there. <laughs> no. I mean, you could make individual little worms that make all these wrinkles. I'm just going to do a wrap here in a second, but I'm giving him some little kneecaps. Partly because it's his kneecaps, and partly because I imagine his pants are sort of billowing over his boots a little bit. the boots that he doesn't have yet. We can hear you. Oh, that's weird. That's funny. I wonder if something got, like why would the Logitech? All right, then. Yes, and said it was a little known playing with the camera. <laughs> they are naughty. <laughs> mm. You guys, Kyla is multitasking. Then I'm gonna take a six inch strip 
maybe half of a, we'll see, I might have a little extra. And I'm gonna start where it's already. Now we're always trying to keep our ribbon flat, but in this case, I'm gonna twist my ribbon and that's gonna actually make some little, um, little wrinkles. that you can kind of accentuate by stabbing in between them more firmly. So that kind of makes it look like he's got some fabric-y pants on. <laughs> Laura said I'm fabulous. That is mm -hmm. getting all kinds of compliments. So where you have wrapped at the top is just gonna kinda be the top of his pants or is he still getting He still gets two triangles, the butt one and the um I don't know what to call it. The low belly. Yeah. <laughs> There's a but that's all the same five or so it all blends. Yeah. Little is known about what happened. <laughs> that's so clever. I love it. <laughs> I'm really only looking at the front. I should look at the back as well. All right, I think we're gonna make, give you guys another couple minutes, <clears throat> but I think we're gonna make the little shapes on the pants and then call it a day. Call it another felt along. When you're adding material, are you adding more than you think you will need each time? I think the rule is probably less than you think. Less because you can always add more. And you don't want to count on stabbing, having to stab something too big down. Like that, that is a much harder way to go than, um, you know, adding a little more fiber. But when you pull your piece, Yes, you can have a little extra, just be sensitive to the fact that you might have to pull a little bit off, yeah. Barbara is wondering if there will be no work before next week. Like, is there gonna be homework? Yeah, I don't, um, homework. I don't think so. I mean, if you wanted to get a little bit ahead so that you could just, uh, watch the face, you know, like you could watch the um, gnome tutorial and probably finish the tunic and boots. Um, it's not that complicated. It's tacos, you know, it's a lot of tacos. You could probably make your little hat ahead of time. Whatever you want to do. Maybe I'll make my hat. I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll try to watch the tutorials and see you know, if there's anything that I think is particularly tricky that we want to elaborate on or anything. All right, I can, and I also would love to see where you guys are if you want to post on Fanfare, to, even though it's not finished, because that gives me an idea of, of our timing and, you know, like was everybody able to, to work together or 
Did I leave you in the dust? <laughs> <laughs> and plus, I just think half finished things are fun. Like doing some roofing. He knows where he needs. <laughs> Did your little? I mean, he's got big knees. <laughs> okay, so we need two. You know what? I should watch. We should figure out how I did the butt. We definitely want a triangle on the front, and that just makes his little like his little belly. Because when we when you look at him from the side how much his belly sticks out we want him to have belly on his pants too he's not he's not like a big belly and then all of a sudden skinny so i'm going to use um, a nice two to three inch piece of my core that matches my pants i've restacked it into a two inch um square and i'm going to felt a nice triangle. I'm actually going to take this edge and turn it into the center because that gives me an even poofier um, let me show you where the piece is gonna go and then you can see why. It's gonna go here. So by turning the edge in, that gives me even a poofier, poofier belly. So I made my triangle, mm -hmm. but then I, instead of pulling fringe off, I turned it into the, okay. and then we really have to just stab them where it counts and um, put the tip right in the center of his, we'll call it his pelvic floor. <laughs> we have, I'm like taking all of this. This is gonna be your butt too. That's okay, we'll, I'll get, I'll grab some more. I have more. This is up here. Yeah. And then I'm bringing this fringe around the sides of the hips. Kind of over the top of the hip. We don't really want him to be hippy like a woman. Like you don't wanna go out here um. So now he has a slight, slightly more belly that's going to meet his tuned belly, which still, I, I, I really, I'm, I think he's on the skinny side. I think he's not fat enough. This is what happens. So it's kind of like a front diaper. It is a front diaper. Okay. This happens with Santa Claus as well. You you build your Santa Claus and you're like, oh, he's nice and fat. He's not. <laughs> it never is, never is. I love how you add a piece and the fringe just makes it totally blend as though you... Yeah. And a little wrinkle, you know, where his thigh meets his um, pelvis is okay. And I can't remember, we might even put another little piece at the top of the leg here once we get the, once we get the butt on. I will go grab my more core. Is this one lighter? It is lighter. I think so. I'm trying to remember how I did it. I can't remember if it was a rectangle or a triangle. A rectangle with the stab down the center. Let's see. Let's take a look at his bottom and see what I think. I think it should be a triangle again. Maybe somebody, does anybody remember? Izzy would remember. She's just been making them. I'm going to try a triangle. We'll see what happens. I forgot a corner. 
horizontal chest wrap. Oh, I did it crisscross instead of horizontal, but you can do it. <laughs> People schooling me on my tutorial. Triangle. I I oh, need it. Triangle. triangle. Okay, so we're making another triangle and we put it on the butt, but you can stab a little butt line. I mean, really, he doesn't need, like, butt cheeks. Yes, he does. <laughs> I mean, he needs butt cheeks, but he doesn't need a butt crack, I guess is what I should say. So another triangle. Same exact thing. It turns out it's the same exact thing. All that discussion. Oh, I love their butt. I love it. So you extra bellied him. You did. He was too skinny. Rectangle pulled apart at the center. The bottom is a pillow puff. Getting different. Yeah. I went with the triangle on this one. I like his little dumpy pants. Uh <laughs> A little, little dumpy pants. Let's look at our reference. <laughs> ah, yes. Definitely a lot of poof. I like the like. I like the way it, it's like all poofed out to the. See, see how fat he is. Yeah, he's big. He's big. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could even go around again the horizontal chest wrap. I'm going to call it a horizontal belly wrap. It doesn't really matter what you add at the bottom of the belly because the tunic will cover it. Um, but if you've got your peacock over your shoulders, you might want to preserve that. So one last thing you could do on the leg, if you wanted to, and I, I don't remember if we did this or not, would be to wrap from, kind of like we did on the shoulder, from the front, around the thigh, maybe once or twice, and then return to the butt. So that would kind of flare out the top of his thigh a little bit more, um, kind of like it is in the picture. And unify your, um, your pieces that you just put on. I think um, wet felting a gnome outfit would be really fun. Yeah, people are excited about that. Yeah, I think that would be really fun. It's not that hard to make a simple pattern, you know, a simple flat pattern for something that you shape. Even boots and stuff. We could wet felt a little leather look 
boots. Although their boots are kind of furry. I feel like I'm not doing justice to his butt. <gasps> you have to do justice to his butt. Know. It's an important gnome feature. And like, yeah, I guess it's And I do like to make them a little bit, a little bit knock kneed and pigeon toed. <laughs> you gotta knock the knees and then, <laughs> and then pigeon toe. Mm. All about the posing. Yeah, yeah. I was actually thinking about, uh, for some reason, I was thinking about gnome hats, even like before this was coming up. And I was thinking if you took, like some of those plastic resists that we have are pretty mm -hmm. sturdy. So if you cut the plastic to make a cone and made the cone, and even if you made the cone big, since a cone is a cone, no matter how big your hat is that you're wet felting, you know, you're either wet felting right at the tip of it or, mm -hmm. but you would use it. So even if you started by needle felting your hat shape, then you could stick the needle felted hat onto the cone resist and, and wet felt it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm winding down. So if I'm gonna um, change my point of view here Oh no, there's no what? signal. What? what did he do? He um, refreshed this. But I don't entirely remember how. Hmm. I do see the no signal. Yeah. Do you, will you um? You know, Talbot. Remember that happened, it, or no? It froze for you. Will you just froze. turn it off and on for me? This. Yeah, it's at the top, and it's yeah. Oh yeah, something happened. It just went to sleep. don't know. Well, I'll just, uh, what's that? Oh, it's not plugged in? But it's power source should just be there. Oh boy. I'm sorry, you guys. While Kyla figures that out, I'm going to pretend like we're, that's not happening. <laughs> Ah, oh, just keep felting. That's weird, because we just did a test yesterday and everything was all, um... No, I thought he, I thought he had it all plugged in. Nice, thank you so much. Is that it? Yeah.
Yeah, I'm just accidentally like moving things all, all <laughs> over the place. A little touchy. There we go. Okay. Peace. We did well. We got a lot done. There's a lot more to do, but it was... <laughs> what do we think? Do we think we can ask them to do tunics and boots? Separately? Yeah. I think if your gnome work is tunics and boots from the tutorial, which is easiest to find, on the website, under the tutorials page, go to tutor tutorial series. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's in the um, intermediate, I think, list. But you'll see gnomes and it says full size, not to be confused with pocket gnomes. And the videos are broken down on a page. And somewhere in the middle, it will show the tunic and the boots. I think that would be good. And then next time we'll work on faces, faces. and beards and hats and um, details. And it'll be fun anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it'll be a good time. And we'll get our, we'll continue to. Nice. He's so pudgy. <laughs> he's pudgy. Um, he's perfect. He's got big knees. Um, we'll continue yes. to um, refine our technological skills <laughs> and uh, let's check if there's any questions before we go. Yes, Nancy, that is so, in. you have no idea how true that is. Our internet wasn't working today. so. I, he said, I can restart it. He was eating his lunch. I said, I can restart it. Climbed on the stool, unplugged the router, waited 10 seconds, plugged it back in. <laughs> and then he did it, the same thing, and it worked. So he always makes my Bluetooth oh my connect. The printer. He can fix the printers. Technology. Even though he hates doing that. Great of him. He hates printers. I really think there's like an energetic issue. My son Evan has an energetic issue. Plus that, plus I think kids that grew up with yeah. screens, they are spastic. Like if you're like <laughs> a grown person watching a younger kid like type or use a touch screen, you're like, oh my God, slow down. What are you doing? Because Evan's just like, da, 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 da. and I think um, they, this digital devices just get like overwhelmed by his aggressiveness <laughs> they just like when it was tiny and i went like if he, i let him use my phone it would come back to me in like chinese or, and like, i didn't know how to change it back oh, or a uh, remote for uh for the tv that's awesome kyla well. yeah so all right well thank you all so much this is always something for me to look forward to and it's really keeping me doing um, doing different things. And, you know, it's just, it's really enjoyable to take time to revisit and make things um, that I haven't made in a long time and to do it with all of you. So as always, it's a pleasure. And we will um, we'll regroup, I'm planning on Saturday at one and we'll continue on if you can do tunics and boots. Your boots and coats. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. All right, thanks All right, you guys. Everybody.